proximal humerus fractures over last almost 30 years and why I have stopped, almost stopped plating fractures of proximal humerus. Some of you might know the places where I work. Now the first opening remark is, it's a big relief that majority of proximal humerus fractures can be treated conservatively. You don't need to operate, almost 80 to 85 percent. Which means the real challenge is the remaining 20 percent which are displaced proximal humerus fractures. I don't care whether it is 4 part or 40 part. If it is not much displaced, they do very well with conservative treatment. So the key is to select the right patient for surgical intervention and it's a small number. Now these are the modalities of operative treatment which are available in the world today. Uh, it is in red, the first one, because that's the most popular, which I'm going to try and explain to you why it's a bad design. Then you have nailing and percutaneous wiring, replacement nowadays, reverse shoulder replacement. Now, in 2023, as I stand today, I do only three operations for fractures of proximal humerus. Percutaneous wiring, a special intramedullary fixation device about which I'll talk in a little detail, and reverse shoulder replacement. This is my thrust that we need to innovate and think different and why plate is a poor design. Two or three part fracture. Now let's be clear that I'm only talking about those which need surgery. So let's take the conserved 80% out. We are talking about that 15-20%. Two or three part fracture, I do percutaneous wiring irrespective of the age but I don't mind if you do a plating in these cases. You will perhaps escape with a good result in two or three part fracture. I will not object. But the real challenge is four part. Four part fractures and four part fracture dislocation. That's the key. So here are some examples of two or three part which I will do percutaneous wiring under local anesthesia which is a block and the patient goes home next morning. Example one, 37 year old female. Uh, a displaced uh, three-part fracture, nailing done. Look at the result. Example two, 53-year-old valgus impacted fracture. The GT is out. Close reduced, percutaneous wiring. 64-year-old age, uh, three-part fracture. Again, uh, almost looks like a head split. Conserved, uh, very good result. Two-part fracture, uh, percutaneous wiring. Very good result. So, now let's take, let's, bring two and three part fracture out of the discussion and talk about the real main crux, the four part fractures of proximal humerus. In young people, you should do everything you can to preserve the head. I have no dispute. I agree with that. In young people, you must try and preserve the head. But how? I am not in favor of plating osteosynthesis. Why? Here are some examples. Uh, being in, uh, in practice in shoulder surgery for so many years, I get all failed cases. And I can show you endless number of cases of plating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, go on and on. Uh, number nine is a, 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 a owner of a chain of hospitals in India. And see the amount of failures that you see with plating. And I'm sure all of you also must have experienced the failed plate in four part fractures of proximal humerus. Why? It is technically difficult operation. It's hard to control the head, which is like a coconut shell. Often these patients are in middle age or elderly age group, very uncommon in the younger 30s and 40s, and it is hard to retain these tuberosities. And the head falls into virus, it undergoes avascular necrosis, malunion, nonunion, and ultimately you're left with a poor functioning uh, shoulder. So I think it's high time that in trying to fool others, we don't fool ourselves. We must accept that there is a problem with plating osteosynthesis for four-part fractures of proximal humerus. And because there is a problem with plating, not with us, with the whole world, see how the whole world has moved. So moment you are 70 and above, need surgery, it's a four-part, they'll do straight reverse. Why? because they have burnt their fingers with plating for four-part fractures, particularly in elderly. And there is a consensus. Everybody agrees in the world today, in the shoulder surgeon's world also, that if you have a four-part fracture which requires surgery and the patient is above 70 and above, straight to reverse. I think Manit is going to talk more about it. Then what do you do for 50 and 70? That's the key. 
50, uh, 70 and above straight reverse, matter is over. You want to do one operation which is less likely to need a second operation. 50 to 70, so we'll talk about. Now, 70 and above, which cases I will do a reverse? My own examples I'll show you, male 70, fracture dislocation, this head is going to be avascular, straight reverse. Uh, female 68, head split, comminuted fracture, it will be a nightmare to plate this, straight reverse. So let's come to now the key, the crux, four part fracture below 70, say between 50 and 70. Because plating was a problem, the world started doing hemiarthroplasty. I'll give you examples of disasters of hemiarthroplasty. Example one, cuff deficient hemiarthroplasty. It is worse than conservative treatment if you have a cuff deficient hemi. Example two, cuff deficient hemi. Example three, cuff deficient hemi. Example four, another disaster. This is a day one failure. Badly done hemi. Uh, recently I operated about 15 days ago. Now look at this hemi. I have no idea what prosthesis this is. Somebody has just removed the head and shoved in some, some ball with a stem. Uh, please don't do such things. Patient is hardly 54, dominant side. He was in so much pain and so frustrated. Ultimately, I see the head. It's almost put other way around. So hemi is not an easy operation. It's difficult to get good result in a hemi for four part fractures. Be very careful. So plating is bad for four part fracture. Hemi also can be unpredictable uh, because you cannot predict the t behavior of the tuberosity. The tuberosity may resorb the tuberosity may disappear, the tuberosity may malunite. In how many cases? In almost 50% of the cases, in the world's best hands. Here is an example of hemi, which I have done few years ago with superb result. But this is an anecdote. It doesn't happen consistently. Look at this four-part fracture. I did a hemi and see this result. Superb result. It's not because I'm a great surgeon. One of, some of you also may have some excellent result with a hemi. But can you do it consistently? Can you do it every time and get this kind of result with a hemi? And this result is good because I've managed to get the tuberosities to unite. And the problem with hemi is it is not easy to get the tuberosities to unite in each and every case. In how many cases you will end up with a problem? Almost 50%. And this is in the hands of Pascal Beaulieu, who is probably currently the shoulders number one surgeon in the world in France, he has problems with the hemi in almost 50% of cases. So beware, my friends, when you have a four part fracture, don't underestimate hemi, you may end up with a huge problem if it is a cuff deficient hemi. So now back to summarizing 50 to 6, 70 age group. If plating is bad, his hemi is bad, then what do you do? So this is what I do and I'm in the process of modifying this prosthesis. Let me give you an idea. It has a stem which is an intramedullary device and the stem can be increased in height or decreased in height to restore the height of the prosthesis I mean, of the head and create enough space for the tuberosities to be fitted inside. The staple goes into the head. So this is typically I would use it for a four part fracture below 70, below 70. Four part fracture or even four part fracture dislocation in very young where I want to uh, preserve the head even if it is avascular. So this is the first generation prosthesis. It was just a single stem uh, and then it was modified. The staple goes into the head. Uh, uh, circumferential fit is perhaps the best fit to control the head. Uh, this is an example to show you that how uh, a few screws do not really work. The staple embeds into the cancellous bone and the platform really stabilizes and controls the head like this. The stem goes uncemented into the shaft and you can adjust the height of the prosthesis to restore the height. Let me show you. This is how we do it. The staple goes into the head, the stem goes there, and then you can have the distractor to increase the height so that the calcar is restored and the lateral side space is created depending on the extent of the height of the tuberosity which may vary from patient to patient and the tuberosity naturally wants to sit there. Let me show you some examples, 48 year old male, like I committed earlier in a young patient, I want to preserve the head, he had a vascular injury, so I called the vascular surgeon, he put a graft and this is the implant and look at the result. I cannot imagine any plating giving this kind of functional result, full 100 on 100 constant score. Another example, a 68 year old male, very active 68 year old, same design implant and 8 months post-op constant score of 92, fracture united beautifully. 52 year old female, bad fracture, again united beautifully. 
uh, another male 52 head split as I got more experience I became more uh, uh, aggressive in using this implant even in this head split because he's 52 I want to preserve the head and you can see the head split and it's united beautifully excellent shoulder function constant score of 90 again somebody did this kind of fixation in Bombay why because they all have realized how plating can be and then referred to me this was bound to fail this rush nail and tension band uh, wiring I did adjust unique again united one failure uh, I usually do this to the superior approach I did not realize that there is a butterfly fragment and because of the superior approach I couldn't stabilize it I put the implant and then the implant was unstable so whenever you have an extension of the fracture distally use a deltopectoral approach so that you can tackle that at the same time of course I changed it to a reverse this is published in journal of shoulder and elbow surgery 30 cases in 2020 you can have a look at it now a little extension when you have a four-part fracture where avascular necrosis is almost certain then I do adjust hemi and let me give an idea so same implant but instead of the uh, patient's head being thrown away you put it in a cap and the cap fits on the same stem and this bone the head helps union of the tuberosities what is the problem with conventional hemi union of the tuberosities behavior of the tuberosities which means the cuff and this allows the tuberosities to heal beautifully so you take the head make a hole in the center put this cap like a surface replacement and it goes on the stem so here are some real examples now in these cases avascular necrosis is almost certain so I will do a hemi but not a conventional hemi a just hemi by preserving the head and placing it under the cap and see how beautifully the tuberosities unite in these cases another see this example uh, head is split almost into two halves I preserve the head put it under the cap and it united so head split or where avascularity is almost certain I would do a just hemi but the head is likely to be viable than a just unique so take home message less than 50 of course you must do osteosynthesis more than 70 four part fracture direct reverse it's 50 to 70 where you need to scratch your head chairman sir and think of something different thank you very much for uh